Hello everyone, Danasa here with Action VFX. In this tutorial, we will be keying this green screen shot in Adobe After Effects. If you haven't seen my previous tutorial where I listed 5 chroma keying tips, feel free to check it out on the description below. Because in this video, I'm going to apply those tips that I mentioned to key out our footage here, as well as a couple other new tips and tricks that I will show you along the way. Before we start, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on more tutorials like this one. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we have this plate that I got from our friend at Red Giant, and we are going to key out the green background. And this isn't going to be a walk in the park, because as you can see, our talent here is wearing a reflective armor that reflects the green screen. So we have to be careful to not key out that part of the armor. Not to mention that we have heavy motion blur on the sword, and also some green screen spilling on the boots and pants. And of course, the hair details. All of these complications means that we cannot just use one key light to tackle this. So we will use multiple keying layers and combine them into one cohesive map. So first, let's prepare our shot. As I mentioned in the 5 tips video, always denoise your shot and always do garbage mask. While the shot here looks clean enough on first glance, it's always a good habit to denoise it before we begin keying. To denoise it, you can use effects such as remove grain, but for this, I am using Neat Video's Reduce Noise plugin. And using that plugin is really simple too. All I have to do is to just grab an open space in the footage and then click on Build Profile. And if we check here, we can see the before and after the denoising. This before and after difference is more evident on the alpha channel when you are doing your key. So after we denoise, I want to render this out. Okay, so here is the rendered denoise file and replace our original plate. And then let's add some rough mask that is following around our subject so we can just focus on what we need to key. Okay, so this is the rough mask. Now let's pre-compose this, move all attributes, and now let's start keying. Let's duplicate our plate first. The bottom layer here will serve as a reference for the original plate that we can go back to. So let's disable it for now. And first thing we want to do is we want to get a core key of the shot. So let's get key light and pick a green from the background. And here we have our rough key mat. Now, in the view of the key light here, we want to change the final result to intermediate because we want to see the raw result of our footage being masked by the key mat directly without the spill suppression or other additional effects on the result. So. The core key is essentially the inside or skeleton mat of our key. So I'm just going to play around here with our clip black and clip white until we get a solid overall key on our subject. Okay, so this is pretty good, but unfortunately we are still getting some holes in the alpha here, especially around the reflective area of the armor. So let's patch that. Let's duplicate our key layer and let's soften the key here until the hole is filled. And then let's mask around it. And then I want to do this patching multiple times until I covered all the holes and we get a solid opaque key of our subject. Okay, so we have a solid key. Now you notice that I didn't really do anything with the sword. We'll deal with the keying of the sword on its own because it has so many motion blurs. So we're just going to focus on our talent here. Now, since this is supposed to be our core key, let's create an adjustment layer and get matte choker and let's erode the matte edges and then let's pre-compose this next i want to get rid of the entire head especially for the hair here because the hair has its own issue with the details as you can see so i want to do a separate core key for that so let's create a mask and subtract the head and then we want to animate it along the shot and then since we have the shield coming up in front of the head, let's create another mask to bring that part of the shield back. And then I want to do some manual cleanup by creating a mask and subtracting some parts that I wasn't able to key. Okay, so here we can see that we have a solid core key. So now we are going to bring back those edges that we have eroded before. So let's duplicate our reference pre-comp again, put it on top, and then let's add key light again and change it to intermediate. And just like I mentioned before, we want to build this edge key section by section. 
especially here we can see how the key is not creating a good uniform edges across our subject. So what I want to do first is to get a good key on the foot. One trick to make sure that we have a good key when we are keying is to always go back and forth between using the black background and the transparency. Because some pixels may be more visible on the black background, while some others is more visible on the transparency checkerboard. And then always compare our result with the original footage, like the reference layer that we have here. Here we can see that even the hard edges is a bit soft. That means when making our edge key, I have to get a little bit of that green spill on the edges of my subject, but not too much. Okay, so here we have a really good edge key around the foot. So let's mask around that area. And then I want to do another subtraction mask here to get rid of some of the extra stuff on the shoelace that I wasn't able to key up. Next, we're going to duplicate the layer and then delete the mask. And then let's mask around the boots and let's do another key. And this time we want to capture the edges on the top part of the boot here that got eroded when we were keying the foot. And then basically we want to keep doing this patching method until we cover all the edges of our subject. Okay, great. So here we have successfully created multiple layers of key for just the legs. So it's all looking nice, but when we play our shot, we can see a little bit of jagged chattering noise on our edges. So let's get rid of that. Precompose our edge layers that we just made, and then we want to add key cleaner effects to the precomp. This will smooth out our alpha map and reduce the radius to one. Then let's check the reduced chatter and then get the alpha contrast to something like 20%. Perfect. Now we can still see some of the green edges on our key. Some are just green spill while others are these extra edges that we failed to key out. So let's create an adjustment layer and add advanced spill suppressor just to push down the green a little bit so we can see which are spill and which are these extra edges that we need to fix. Okay, so this actually looks better, but we can still see some of the green edges is now gray. So these are the extra edges that we need to get rid of. But we will fix this later. I want to first finish keying the entire body of our talent first. So let's disable our spill suppressor for now. And we are going to continue build up the edges of our talent. Okay, so here I have the edge key layers for the body torso. So let's pre-compose this and then get rid of the chattering edge again with another key cleaner. This time I want to make sure that the edge radius is 0.1 to get a more tighter cleanup. And then let's continue creating edge key for the arms and the shield. For the shield, I made the key to be a little bit softer to accommodate the blurry edge that we get from a little bit of motion blur. Okay, so here are the key layers for the arms and the shield. And once again, I ignored the sword here because we will deal with that later. So now let's pre-compose this arm edge key together and add another key layer to smooth out the edge. And there we go. We have created the edge keys of our talent. Now let's deal with the sword. The sword is very problematic because as we can see, it is going back and forth from being a solid shape with hard edges to a blurry smear. So to reconcile with that inconsistency, what I'm going to do is create a soft key for the sword so we can include the motion blur in the mat. And then after that, I want to create a mask to isolate the sword very tightly. And then I want to manually animate the mask to follow the movement of the sword. Okay, great. So now we have the body and the sword key. Let's turn on the advanced spill suppressor to see what we have. Okay, so everything is looking nice, but we still have to deal with the extra edge pixels that pop up here and there, especially around the leg here. So let's deal with that. Let's select all the keys that we made except for the sword and let's pre-compose it and name it something like body key mat. And then pre-compose it again and let's name it something like body key edge fix. Then let's go inside the edge fix pre-comp. And now what we're going to do is we are going to add some heavy effects on this pre-comp layer to get rid of that extra pixels on the edge. However, as you noticed from before, our body matte pre-com layer here is getting pretty heavy from all the key lights inside it. So we want to render this out first. So while inside this body key matte pre-comp, let's go to the composition menu and click pre-render. And we're gonna make sure that we are rendering on a QuickTime format, and then we are going to include the RGB and alpha. And here, 
I want to have import and replace as my post render action. That way, after we finish render, the body mat precom that we had before will be replaced by this new render file. So now let's hit render. Okay, so now we have finished rendering. And if we go back to the edge fix precomp, we see that our body mat precomp has been automatically replaced with the render that we just had. So now let's start doing some edge fixes. Let's duplicate our layer here, and then let's add refine hard mat on the duplicate layer. So refine hard mat is somewhat similar to key cleaner in that it manipulates the edges of our mat. So let's go to shift edges here and increase it to 100%. And now we see that our matte edges is getting extended greatly. And then I want to click on extend where smooth and this is what we have. So what's happening here is that we are basically grabbing pixels that are close to the edge and then smear it out. So that way we are able to cover up those extra pixels that we had before with the smear. However, our matte edge is not too thick. So let's shrink this back. Let's put this layer below. And then on the top layer that doesn't have the refine mat, let's set the mode to stencil alpha. And there we go. Stencil alpha is basically masking every layer below it based on the top layer alpha. So like alpha mat mixed with an adjustment layer. So now on this one frame, everything looks great. We get our proper matte edge back and we have covered up those extra pixels. However, when we hit play, we are getting this flicker or glitches on some areas of our key here, like on the edge part of the shield here, and also on the rim of these boots. So to get rid of that, we basically just want to patch those glitches with the original unfixed edge that we had before. So let's bring our original denoise plate, put it in the middle, and now we are back to where we were before we added the refined hard mat. So now we're going to do another patchwork. So let's create masks around where those glitches are. Okay, so these are basically the mask patches that I did to cover up the glitches. So now if we hit play, this is what we have. Perfect, all the edges look nice. So now let's go back to the main comp and turn on our advanced fill suppressor and see what our key looks like. Next, let's finally key out the head and the hair. So let's duplicate the unkeyed plate pre-comp and keep it below all the other key. So for this one, we want to create a semi core key for the head. So let's get key light and let's push the key until we lose the tiny hair details, but we still want to have the hair clumps. Also, we want to smooth the edge of the mask. That way we can combine this core key layer with the soft hair details seamlessly. Okay, great. So this is the core key of the head. Now let's duplicate the plate again and now we are going to do the smaller hair details. First, make sure that this soft key layer is below the hair core key, and then let's solo it for now. And here we see that the hue of the green background and the blonde hair is a bit different, but not too different. While green and yellow are two different colors, they are still quite similar. So we need to find a way to contrast the hair and the green background a little bit more. And to do that, we are going to use Color Balance HLS. So turn our hue dial here, and now we see that the color of the background and the hair has shifted and becoming more separated. Now let's get tint and then let's get curve and create an even more contrast to really separate the background and the hair details. And then get a shift channel, and then we are going to take the alpha from the lightness. Now, after we switch our color channel to alpha, it looks like our opaqueness gets reduced. So feel free to go back to the curve and tamper with it again. Now we want to mask this layer to only around the hair because that's the only part where we want to key. But we cannot do that because the shift channel effects overrides the alpha designation from the mask. So to get around that, we have to do the mask on another layer. So create a solid and let's pick the color of the hair and then we are going to put it below and let's alpha mat this solid to the hair matte key that we just created. And then mask the solid to be around the hair. And then we want to animate the mask so it follows the hair details for the entire shot. And perfect. Now let's turn our advanced spill suppressor back on and we have our key. The last thing you might want to do after we wrap up with our green screen is to do some manual cleanup. 
Like for example, as you probably have noticed, there's a weird extra pixels on the armpit there. It didn't get keyed out for some reason, so let's grab a mask and subtract that part manually. And there we go. All we have to do now is to just drag our composition to a background plate. And that was advanced keying tutorial in Adobe After Effects. Once you have your key, you probably need to add some VFX elements to your shot, which you can get anytime at actionvfx.com. At Action VFX, we provide high quality VFX assets for your VFX needs. We have fire, explosions, energy, and many, many others. You can also sign up for our Action VFX subscription starting at the low cost of $14.99 a month. This is the most affordable way to access our library and you can cancel anytime, no contract. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. And see you next time. Bye-bye.